less than a mile to the stockade. It was heavy running through the woods. The shooting was getting louder. Suddenly before me, I saw a clear a smoke of musket fired nearby. Hey there! Go, sir! Hey, don't shoot, it's me! Who's me? Me, Jim Hawkins! A moment later, I was over the stockade among my friends. And soon afterwards, the firing ceased. The mutineers were saving their powder. The stockade was a good place, with a paling six feet high all around it. We could have held it against the regiment. And here, Captain Smollett decided to stay and await our enemy's next move. I told Dr. Livesey and the squire about Ben Gunn. Hey! Drag a truce! Drag a truce! Who's that? It's Silver. Keep indoors, men. Send to one. This is a trick. Who goes? Stand where we fire! Drag a truce! Doctors, watch on the lookout. Dr. Livesey, take the north side, if you please. Yes. Jim, the east. Gray, west. The watch below, all hands salute muskets. Lively men and careful. What do you want with your flag of truce? Captain Silver, sir! Come to my town! Captain Silver! Why, you black-hearted scoundrel! Silence, sir! Silence. If you wish to talk to me, you can come, and that's all. If there's any treachery, it'll be on your side, and the Lord help you. That's enough, Captain. A word from you's enough. I know a gentleman, and you may lay to that. You'd better sit down. Uh, ain't it gonna let me inside, Captain? The main cold morning, to be sure, sir, to sit outside upon the sand. Ah, oh, there's Jim, the top of the morning, to you, Jim. Why, well, then you're all together like a happy family in a man is speaking. If you've anything to say, my man, better say it. Right you were, Captain Smollett. Duty is duty, to be sure. Well, here it is. We want that treasure. We'll have it. That's our point. You just soon save your lives, I reckon, and... That's yours. You have a chart, haven't you? That's as may be. Oh, well, you have. I know that. What I mean is, we want your chart. You give us the chart to get the treasure by, and I'll give you my happy Davy upon my word of honor to clap you somewhere safe ashore. Is that all you have to say? Every last word by thunder. Refuse that, and you've seen the last of me but musket balls. Very good. Now you'll hear me. If you'll come up one by one, unarmed, I'll engage to clap you all in irons and take you home... To a fair trial in England. If you won't, as my name's Alexander Smollett, I've flown Miss Sovereign's colors and I'll see you all to Davy Jones. You can't find the treasure. You can't sail the ship. And you can't fight us. I stand here and tell you so. And at the last good word you'll get from me. Now, throat me like. <laughs> laugh. <laughs> laugh, my thunder, laugh. Or an odd doubt you laugh on the other side. And the die will be the lucky ones. Ten minutes later, nothing remained of the attacking party but the five who had fallen. Four on the inside and one on the outside of the palisade. The mutineers did not come back that night. They had got their rations, as the captain put it. The next day was stifling hot. After dinner, Dr. Livesey sent for me. Uh, Jim, was it cheese you said Ben Gunn had a fancy for? Yes, sir, cheese. Well, Jim, uh, just see the good that comes of being dainty in your food. You've seen my snuff box, haven't you? And you never saw me take snuff. The reason being that in my snuff box I carry a piece of parmesan cheese. A cheese made in Italy. Very nutritious. Well, that's for Ben Gunn. Oh, goodbye, my lad. Then he took up his hat and pistols, girt on his cutlass, put the chart in his pocket, and set off briskly through the trees. That afternoon, the blockhouse being stifling hot, and the little patch of sand inside the palisade ablaze with midday sun, and so much blood about me, and so many poor dead bodies lying around, a new idea came into my head. This was to swim out under cover of the night, cut the Hispaniola adrift, and let her go ashore where she fancied. The mutineers, after their repulse of the morning, had nothing nearer their hearts than to up anchor and away to sea. This, I thought, would be a fine thing to prevent. It was evening when I reached the east coast of the island. I 
could see the Hispaniola lying at anchor offshore. And there was the Jolly Roger, the black flag of piracy, flying from her peak. As the last rays of daylight dwindled and disappeared, absolute darkness settled down on Treasure Island. The next night, I was back on land. I was proud of myself, and with good reason. I had grounded the Hispaniola, beached her up tidily in the North Inlet with no harm done, safe from the mutineers. I had no trouble finding the stockade. Coming in from the shore, keeping close in shadow where the darkness was thickest, I crept into the blockhouse. I could see nothing. The doctor and the squire must have worried about me. I should lie down in my own place, I thought, and enjoy their faces when they found me in the morning. I felt for a place to lie down. Peace of the bay! Peace of the bay! Don't go! Peace of the bay! Don't go! Bring a torch, Dick. Well, well, shiver my timbers, Jim Hawkins. Dropped in like, eh? Quite a pleasant surprise for poor old John. I've always liked you, I have, Jim, for a lad of spirit. I picked her my own self when I was young and handsome. I always wanted you to join my camp and take your share and die a gentleman and... Now, my cock, you've got to. You can't go back to your own lot. Where are they? Now, where do you think, my son? Have you killed them? What do you think? Well, I'm not such a fool, but I know pretty well what I have to look for. But there's a thing or two I have to tell you. And the first is this. Here you are in a bad way. Ship lost, treasure lost, men lost. And if you want to know who did it, it was I. Uh, I was in the apple barrel the night we sighted land. And I heard you, John, and you, Dick Johnson, and Hans, who is now at the bottom of the sea, and told every word you said before the hour was out. And as for the schooner, it was I who cut her cable. And it was I who brought her where you'll never see her more, not one of you. I no more fear you than I fear a fly. I'll put one to that and here go, you sneaking son of a scut. Who would I? Come on, sir! Who are you, Tom Morgan? Maybe... You thought you was captain's here, perhaps. I'm going to kill the boy. Did any of you gentlemen want to have it out with me? Him that wants it shall get it. You won't fight him by thunder, you'll obey. You may lie to it. I like that boy now. Never seen a better boy than that. He's more a man than any pararatty in this here house. What I see is this. Let me see him that'll lay a hand on him. That's what I see. You may lie to it. Hmm. Seems to have a lot to say. Pipe up and let me hear it. A lie to. John. What? We we got something for you, John. Step up, I won't bite you. Hand it over, lover. The black spot. I thought so. What's on it? Deposed. Oh, that's it, is it? Uh, yeah. Very pretty wrote, to be sure. Like print, I swear. But it ain't one bit prettier wrote than this. What's that? And what does it look like, lads? A chart, that's what it is. A chart! A chart of this island, old Flint's chart. Now, what do you say to that? Yes, that's Flint's sure enough. That's it. Show you, and a clovage to it. That was the end of the night's business. Only much later, I woke up suddenly and felt someone beside me. Jim. Jim, my boy. Yes, Long John? I saved your life here tonight, Jim. Now, you and me stick close, Jim, back to back like in case of trouble and... Talking of trouble, Jim, why did those friends of yours leave that shot behind when they cleared out of here? They did, though. I, I came in here this morning and found the place empty and the chart lying there on the table where I couldn't miss it. And there's something under that. Something under that. Good or bad. Good or bad.